In 2865, Hurston Dynamics purchased a planet in the Stanton system and began the process of looking for their capital, being careful not to build on the resource-intense areas they bought the planet for in the first place. Because you gotta leave all that free for the mining, after all. Now, during that search, they designated one particular area already filled with structures that house the on-world workers by the three-letter designation LOR, an acronym for the rather dismissive title Local Occupational Residency. And after essentially requiring all of their workers to live there, because it makes it easier to keep an eye on everyone, the town eventually gathered an unofficial temporary nickname. <laughs> and as anyone that's ever built something huge and complex can tell you, there are few things in life more permanent than an unofficial temporary nickname. Now, eventually, the Hurston family made this the center of all commerce and residence on the planet. And thus, Lorville continued to grow and expand and be built upon. And in the upcoming Alpha 319, it's taking its next major step forward towards becoming the thriving, brutalist cityscape old Solomon Hurston would be proud of. Well, how would I describe Laurelville to somebody who's never seen it? Lots of crazy stuff happened there. Um, I don't know, man. It's very dusty. Definitely very dusty. Yeah. I think it would be something as a very place that's very polluted. It would be a place that's very oppressive, but also pretty lively at the same time. People are working there day and night. Laurelville is essentially a mega city. It's sprawling. It's huge. And it's on a Stanton One planet inside the Stanton system. The story of Lorville, I know that it's been, uh, it was built by a company, uh, a family business. It's ruled by the Hurston uh, family. And um, it's very, it's a very authoritarian regime. Place that's very like expensive in the scale of it. Reminds you a little bit of 1984, that kind of stuff maybe. Also a little bit of a Tyrell Corporation from uh, Blade Runner, something like that. That's what comes to my mind when uh, I think of Lorville, yeah. So a landing zone like Lorville is, um, uh, is a hub for the players. It's, uh, it has many uh, services. There's the habs, the habitations, and uh, from there like they can spawn there's the, uh, the the hospitals. There's uh, shops. Um, there's missions. There's obviously multiple areas and some new areas as well. When you're arriving from your ship, uh, the first thing you're gonna see is uh, well, you're gonna see the CBD, of course, Central Business District, and this is where the Hurston family oversees the the city. There's the spaceport uh, that. Obviously, it has a lot of the transit line going to. Uh, you can also go to the L19, where there's obviously some residential. Leading up from like the, the center, we have like these those transit lines that are like going in different directions from the center of the city. And from there, there's many uh, districts inside the inner city. In the inner city, we represent the different classes of the residents of Lorville. There's areas of the, where there's more wealth. These are like um, higher up top and uh, they have like uh, gold cladding on their buildings. And we have like lower areas that are like uh, closer to the industrial areas. And it's mainly uh, residential and commercial. We have like lots of uh, uh, opportunities to, for branding. The branding comes mainly from uh, Nicolas Fartin's team. So we partnered with them and they, they come up like with uh, new brands. In turn, the environment art team helped to uh, integrate those into billboards and the holograms throughout the city. So the areas like the CBD, uh, the L19 at the spaceport, you're all familiar with, uh, these haven't changed. They just have moved us slightly because they were already um, up to a quality that still works today. And what we've worked on is the connecting tissue between those to make like a, a like the city feel actually the big size compared to what it was. 
buildings are now much higher, but you're also gonna see how the city now extends further away, a little bit like tentacles, right? And it's, it spreads out into those uh, smaller islands. We call them islands. Uh, those are the industrial islands. Let's say you start from the spaceport and you wanna travel outside towards the industrial islands. First of all, they're much further away, but they're still connected, you know, they connected uh, using pipelines uh, from the city to the outskirts. And once you get to the industrial islands, you can see, you know, it's filled with chimneys, lots of activities happening there. It really shows, you know, the, the, the might that is uh, Hurston Dynamics and the Hurston family itself. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. <laughs>
the atmosphere. Chris did a great job on the atmosphere and it looks very, very uh, unhealthy, I would say, to be there in that atmosphere for very long. VFX, uh, they did a great job with uh, especially the, the, the chimneys, uh, the amounts of smoke that the industrial zones are creating. It really en emphasizes the, uh, the pollution aspect to uh, how they do business in Hurston. Lighting definitely with the new atmosphere looks uh, really much uh, different and it really showcases uh, the, the ominous feeling of the city. The whole composition of the city works through uh, with lighting just hand in hand. Without lighting, like everything looks a bit flat. And so it's very important in that process to bring kind of the final look, to bring it alive from what the concept art originally kind of said about the location. The biggest change from the old Orville to the new is the scale of those buildings and they feel much more integrated, uh, lifelike as a city. And that was one of the reasons um, at the beginning why we wanted to um, to change Lorville was to get like that proper scale throughout the city and that feeling that, uh, that basically can make you feel like it's a real city. Making the buildings at the correct scale can enable us later to create interiors for those buildings. And so in that sense, Lorville will be ready for that. Getting close to the city, like especially while flying, like the, the feeling um, is just so great. We've lowered the restricted zone as much as we can. And we can really get close to the buildings now. The size of those windows are like true to real life size of windows. The scale of things feels like really good. Level design definitely also pl plays a role in, inside the city. We try to make sure that uh, players, if they want to fly their ship around buildings or into some of these uh, areas that we call trenches, level design reminded us to, you know, keep some openings so that players can move around them easily. On our side, we also made sure that you can navigate in some of those uh, structures, uh, those trenches, you can do slaloms over uh, around those pipelines and, you know, may maybe some of those, uh, those areas could become potential racetracks for the future, you know? Lorville will have like racing opportunities, I think, because that now there's like tunnels, there's uh, cranes, there's sky bridges, there's like big straddle frames and these can create target points for basically for racing. For me, the greatest thing was seeing the team come together and pitch ideas and um, deliver on those, uh, those challenges and those ideas. It's been a lot of work from every department and especially in lighting, I think it's been a big project that we've worked on. And there's so much details that's been put on every one of these areas. And I think it, uh, I'll be really excited to see how people react to this. I think it's something that people have been expecting for a long time. I think for the player, you know, uh, the fact that we can go around these areas, whether it's land vehicles or, uh, you know, we're using spaceships, fly around those, these uh, structures, I think it's going to be a, a good experience, yeah. I hope the players appreciate uh, the new Lorville just the, the sheer scale, and that it feels like you can see Lorville from Everest uh, uh, Station, so it makes it like a big impact, I think. And I hope that the players notice. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that a landing zone is more than just the three-dimensional geo that forms it. It's that confluence where narrative, level design, branding, lighting, and atmospheric artistry meet commerce, residents, and a foundation for future gameplay opportunities like racing, mission interiors, and more, and that this newest evolution of Lorville is scheduled to make its way to you in next month's Alpha 319. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for exploring the process of game development with us, and we'll see you all here next week.
Yeah, no, vacation was good. Paris, London, saw some shows, saw Phantom. You were right, it was great. It, uh, it actually kind of reminded me of you because the, uh, the, um, you, you can't see your, um, you both got the same beautiful singing voice. <laughs>